Welcome to Mead Making 101. Let's learn how to make some mead. So what is mead? Mead is an alcoholic beverage that is made from honey, fruit, really a combination of honey and water or fruit. <laughs> That's kind of the gist of it. You can add anything in the world to it. Spices, other fruit, I mean, it's limitless. <laughs> as long as it is mostly honey-based. That's the important part here. Mead is known as honey wine in some worlds, but it has to be honey forward to make it mead. You might have seen this video before as a 101 a long time ago, and I'm redoing it because I, I was pretty, I don't wanna say inexperienced. The content of the video was good, but my delivery was terrible, as you can see right here. Um, 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 uh, um, um, so, um, pretty tough. There's a lot of ums and uhs. So let's go ahead and uh, redo this thing, get it started again. So in this starting 101, we're gonna talk about mead, the basics of it. We're not getting too deep. I've already done some other videos, so if you wanna see some other content about mead, especially videos that are deeper than just what we're talking about, there's other videos for that. But spoilers, I am redoing 201 as well. So let's go ahead and dive into our topics today. Uh, our topic number one is what is mead? Topic number two is all about your yeast choice. Topic number three is knowing what important things you need to get started. Topic four, how long will it take? And that's it, that's what we're gonna cover today. I am referencing some notes that I've created. You can get these notes yourself, print them out, download them, all free via the link in the description. You can find it there. So let's go ahead and talk about this. What is mead? This is a mead right here that I'm drinking. It is a tropical mead that used fruit. So it used some tropical honey. One fun thing about mead, especially uh, in the modern era, is that there's so many different kinds of honey you can choose. You can get honey from every area of the globe and try just really interesting things. The other cool thing about honey is there's a lot of the same name. For example, wildflower honey. If you get wildflower honey from Oklahoma, where I'm at, and then you compare it to wildflower honey from North Dakota, it's gonna be different. It's gonna be a different mead you make. So that's a cool aspect. Same thing goes for fruit and every other flavor you add in there. So mead, like we said, is a very old beverage. It's one of the oldest recorded ones. People often equate it to the Vikings, and they talk about how they're the ones who pioneered it and all these things. In truth, I think it's older than the Vikings, so that's a fun little fact there. Also, mead is a beverage that they enjoyed, but it became something that they almost had to drink because it was safer than water. If you think about it, when they would go places, if you were to put a bunch of water in a barrel, it's not gonna stay very good for a while. So making something that's alcoholic and putting it into a barrel, you can travel with that for longer and it stay safe, basically, because the alcohol protects from bad bacteria. So they often used it instead of water, notoriously. I do have a video about all 24 styles of mead you can make, because each one's different. When you add fruit, it becomes something. When you add a spice, it becomes something. A traditional mead is honey and water and yeast. And that's it. You leave it alone, other than maybe some oak, something like that. But honey, water, yeast is a traditional. There's a video, like I said, of all 24 styles. But most importantly, mead is honey-centric. You're highlighting the honey. You want it to be a very important part of the brew. Topic number two, let's talk about your yeast. A, a misconception in the brewing world is that all yeast are created to be uh, the same, like create the same product, essentially. That's not true. Each yeast is different. Yeast have different alcohol tolerances. They have different temperature ranges at which they best ferment. They have flavor profiles that they pop out whenever they brew, and, or whenever they brew, whenever they ferment. They have uh, nutrient requirements. There's like a bunch of things that these yeast need. So here's a couple examples of some yeast. And they have their own little flavor graphs, as I'll show you. These Lauven products often have a flavor graph that tells you what profiles you'll get from the yeast, as well as, like I said, the ABV, or alcohol by volume tolerance, temperature range, and then nitrogen requirement, or the yeast nutrient. So as you just saw, those are some different 
geists, and they all have different stats, which is kind of fun. You can go get the run-of-the-mill bread yeast and just go to your local whatever grocery store, get yourself some bread yeast in the baker's aisle, and uh, pitch that into your mead. It's not necessarily the best, in my opinion. I've had lots of experience with baker's yeast or bread yeast. It's put out some okay product. If you're going to commit a lot of money in buying honey, it's fun to say, you got to spend the money to also get some yeast. The yeast will be a game changer, I can promise you that. I have an entire video talking about 20 different yeasts versus one mead recipe. And there is a vastly different product between the 20 yeast. You can find that video in the description as well. Topic number three, what do you need to get started? This is an important thing too. You've learned about mead, what is it? You have learned about yeast, also very important. How about the things you'll need? So here are some bare bones mead things, equipment you'll need. You'll need a, some sanitizer of sorts. There's lots of different ones out there. I highly recommend to get some. Use it before you start brewing. Use it whenever you're in the middle of brewing and you need to clean something. Sanitizer will save your brew, especially if something goes south. You'll need a plastic jug or a uh, even a glass carboy, something to ferment in because that's how you're gonna have fermentation occur. I highly recommend to use plastic buckets for a while because you can start higher with, a, with more volume than you'll end with. After fermentation, you'll lose some mead because of dead yeast, or if you're using fruit, stuff like that. That all falls to the bottom and you lose a little bit of mead. So start over your total volume you want, that way you land at that. You need honey, of course. Airlock and bung, auto siphon and tubing, which is something we can move the mead into a new container with. You also need yeast nutrient, Fermade O, Fermade K, Dimonium Phosphate, something like that will get you going. If you want to take the next step and get a few more things, that the bare bones is just to get you started. Here's some things that are even more helpful. A hydrometer, highly recommend to get a hydrometer. You don't need one to brew, but it helps you measure your gravities overall. I have a video on how to use it, so very important that you know how alcoholic your meat is and it just helps with repeatability. There are other things you can get, like I'm turning my world against the airlocks and I have this breathable silicone bung. These are kind of expensive. Stuff like that is extra. You don't need necessarily, but I highly recommend it. The hydrometer is, is the most important thing you could ever really buy for brewing. I'm really good friends with my local brew shop called Learn to Brew here in Edmond, Oklahoma, and we've worked together to put together a mead kit that features all of these things. It doesn't include the honey. There is a way you can purchase honey with it. If you'd like to support them, you can do that. I don't get any proceeds from that purchase. So I just am supporting them because they're really good friends of mine. So if you want to, there'll be a link in the description to their online source and you can buy a kit and they'll ship it to you. And it will come with some instructions and some other stuff like that. Topic four, how long is this gonna take? I am interested in doing this, but I've only got two weeks. Unfortunately, you're not gonna have a mead ready in two weeks, but you will have a mead ready, generally speaking, within, I would say six to eight weeks is a comfortable range. Now that also depends on how alcoholic the brew is. If you make something super strong, let's say it's a 15% mead, you won't wanna drink it at eight weeks. It's gonna be very um, alcohol heavy and forward and not necessarily what you want. So you might wait a little longer on something like that. But generally speaking, six to eight weeks, you can have a pretty decent product. If you're making something really low alcohol, let's say 6%, 8%, you can turn it around at that time comfortably and it'd be very good. I have recipes ranging from 4% to 20%. And I love getting to try each one. The lower ABV you have, the quicker turnaround, the higher ABV, the longer the turnaround is. So that's just something to help you know that. One important factor here is if you will use yeast nutrient, you will find that your brews move faster, have a healthier fermentation, and ultimately that allows you to drink it quicker. So six to eight weeks is like a general time frame, but I would say it can be flexed depending on your alcohol by volume and your yeast nutrient usage. If you use good nutrition, your yeast will be happy and they won't put off any weird flavors. I haven't gone very deep in this video because 201, we get a little deeper. 301, 401, 501, I've already been done. So if you wanna find that, 501's already on the channel and it's super deep. 
overall, you just want to get going. And I hope that you will go and buy some honey, buy some equipment, start mixing up your first batch. I have, not even joking at this point, hundreds of recipes on the channel. If you want to find something I've done, just look it up. Um, plum, a plum mead. Okay, I've done that, great. Here's my plum mead recipe. Go ahead and check those out and I hope that you'll get started. Most importantly, just get going. That's, you're not gonna make the, <laughs> your first brew is not gonna be perfect, spoilers, but it will be good and it will be yours, which is super fun. So I hope you enjoy the beginning processes. There will be a re-upped version of 201 coming out in the future. So look forward to that, but thank you for watching. Let me know what your first brew is gonna be and I will see you in a future video. Cheers.